Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today's video is going to be the first part in a video series all about Wix tables, where we're going to talk about from the most basic concepts such as adding a table to your website and connecting it to a collection with a data set, which is the topic of our video today, all the way to advanced topics such as adding filters to your table and connecting to third party data using Velo. So if you're interested in all of that, I recommend you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications and let's get started. So the first step to connecting a table to data will be to surprise add a table element to your website. Uh, so if you're not familiar with how to do that, that would be over here on the left side, you have add elements. And then you're going to go here and look for a list. And then within list, you have a section called tables. Uh, you can also use this search bar on top in order to just search for something like tables, and then you can find it and add it to your site. Uh, and you can add any of these design presets. Let's say I'll just pick this purple one right over here. And then it adds a table to our site. But this table is currently just displaying some mock data. It's not really relevant to us. And we really want to um, we really want to connect it, sorry, to uh, data from our website. Uh, so the first step to doing that would be to set up a data collection. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, I already have one collection set up on my site. It's called mock data. And if we take a look at it, you can see that it just has some random data that I got from this site that I like to use called Mockaroo. And it's just first name, last name, email, gender, etc. Just a thousand random items. And in order to connect our table to this data, we are going to need to add a data set to the page. So let's go ahead and go over here to CMS. And we're going to add a content element. And the content element that we're going to add is a data set. So once we've added that to our site, we can go ahead to the settings of the data set, and we're going to choose the collection that we want to connect to. And this collection is going to be mock data. And since we're only displaying data from our uh, collection here in the table, this can be read only. And the number of items to display will be 12 initially, and we can change that later on if we want. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually connect our table to this data. So in order to do that, we click here over connect to CMS. And as soon as this thing here on the side loads, then we can select a data set that we want to connect it to. So let's say I connect it to the mock data data set. And you can see already that our columns have automatically been generated based on the mock data data set. And these rows are now currently the rows from the data set. And you can see here that um, the first name column, for example, connects to first name text and email and gender, IP address, etc. And we can also add in columns if we want. So for example, I can add in um, let's say something that we're missing ID wasn't listed here. So I can add that in, I can also choose some of the Wix default um, fields, which would be let's say, created date. So let's say I add a column for that. And then it can have the date that this entry was created. These were all created on the same date, because I just uploaded it with a CSV. But you know, you might have data where different entries were created at different points. And that could be a really valuable kind of data point for you to have uh, in your table. Um, let's check out some other things that we can do here. So we can go to manage table. Uh, and this is where you would set up the names of the collect of the columns if they weren't um, connected to a collection. So now it's connected to a collection. So we can't really change that at the moment. Uh, and if you click here, edit connection settings, it'll just take you over here to the CMS. And if, for example, we want to change the name of one of these columns. So let's go back to our collection and open up our collections mock data. And we go over here, you could see right over here, if I go to edit, so this field has a specific name and here it's called first name with an underscore like this, let's say I want to change it to make it a little more aesthetic. So I could change this to first name, and then go ahead and save. And then if we take a look here at our table, uh, this might need to refresh, let's try going into preview mode. 
Okay, no, it's still, <laughs> it's still displaying with that. So let's try and disconnecting it. So I'm going to disconnect this from our data set. So I'm just going to go to not connected. And then I'm going to try connecting it again. And you can see here that it has updated the column name with the name from the collection. Okay. Um, so some other things that we can do is change the aesthetics and display of the table. Um, so if you go over here to the layout part of the toolbar, then you can see here that now we're in custom layout. And if you want, you can go ahead and you can switch this to automatic where the table will kind of expand to include all of the items, which here is about a thousand items. Um, if you don't want to display all a thousand items, you have the option to add pagination. So if you go here to the custom height and then you scroll down right over here, then you can see that it says show pagination. And then what it'll do is it'll just display the amount of items that we defined, which is 12, and then it'll have pagination between the rest. Um, so if we go here, uh, let's expand this a little bit. Okay, now it's only showing four items. I'm not sure why. Uh, but if I go here, oh, here, rows per page, uh, that would be 12, let's say. Awesome. And then that would change, yeah. Okay, so this table is apparently quite different than <laughs> the rest of the elements in Wix in the sense that the data set does not really... Um, control how much data is displayed. So typically this number of items to display would control how many items are displayed. Um, but specifically with tables, Wix has added some additional controls uh, to kind of, I'm not sure why, but maybe for this pagination feature. Um, yeah, and we can just change some other aesthetics here, content alignment, general alignment of the pagination, yeah, row height, header height. I'm not going to get into that stuff because it's mostly aesthetics and it doesn't really have to do so much with data. Um, but connecting this just using a data set uh, has some downsides. Um, we kind of relinquish a little bit of control in terms of, you know, how many columns and which columns are displayed. Um, so if I go, for example, into my connection to the CMS, you can see here that these columns were automatically set up and I don't really have the option to get rid of any of these columns. Um, so if I was to, for example, change this to not connected, then that would just kind of make that data of that column disappear as opposed to actually kind of deleting this entire column. And I don't see anywhere else that that would be possible here within the table. So that's kind of a slight limitation that we have in terms of setting up the tables with just this uh, data set. And that's why later on in this series, we're going to talk a little bit about how to connect it with Velo. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to set up filters for your table. Um, so that is still going to be with no code. That's still going to be with data sets. And then we're going to go and hop in to Velo in the third video of this series. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.